Got it. Okay, we're going. And, and folks, right. I'm going to hand this over to Leanne Hill. Leanne is our program assistant for 4-H in Wise County, and she'll introduce our speakers and our topic. So Leanne, take it away. All right. Um, so thank you all for joining us this evening. And um, I'm proud to introduce um, Trey Mullins and Brody Allison. They are former Wise County 4-Hers. And um, they are going to talk to us for a little while this evening about having a small business as a teenager and talk about some of the growth that they've had in their business since they started. So um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to let Trey um, share some information first. And then when he gets done, Brody's going to share a little bit with us and then we'll have him answer some questions for us. Um, let me get it going here. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, and you can just let me know, you know, when you want me to move it or whatever, and I'll move the screen for you. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name's Trey Mullins, and I'm the owner of Mullins Mowing. Um, I started my company when I was about 13, and I've worked my way up till now, and it's grown over the years into something that me or my parents never intended it to, but it is where it is. Next slide, please. Don't get discouraged when you're starting your business if you start small. I started with a push mower out of the back of a truck and my parents would drive me around and I would mow. And now I've got a truck, a trailer, three mowers and all this other stuff. So in your business, it's okay to start small with doing one or two things and then growing into whatever you want your company to be. Next slide, please. This is uh, advertisement. Advertisement is the single biggest thing that will grow your business. Um, I wasn't big on until last year and the year before about advertisement, but now it that's really how you can grow and expand your company into what you want it to be. And most forms of advertisement now cost little to nothing. Like Instagram is completely free. You just post what you want on there and put your business information and who knows, you could get several calls off that or you could get one or two. You, you never know. It's just a risk you have to take. Next slide, please. The biggest thing, too, is you're your own boss, so you have to do the best work you can for the people who want you to work. Don't go out and say that you're the best and then not do high quality work. If you go out and you're reasonably priced and you do the highest quality work, you'll grow and grow and grow and grow and more people will call and you'll get more business that way by doing the best work you can. And if you're young, people will understand if you miss a spot, you're learning and that just do the best that you can. That's my biggest advice. Next slide, please. Expand your services. In the name, it says Mullins Mowing. Yes, we are mainly a mowing company, but we do offer many other services like landscaping. We do all forms of landscaping, hedge trimming, mulching, I mean, cleanups around your house, leaf removal. We don't do snow removal yet, even though we are considering it because it is a field around here that does get a little work in the winter. So, so don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone to do a job because you might find out, like I did with mulch, that you love it. It's something that you really enjoy to do. Next slide, please. Surround yourself with support. I've been very fortunate that my family and friends have always supported me in this. Um, most of my first clients were my family and they still are. Um, they, they will always support you no matter what. But again, you still have to do high quality work for your family. You might just think because it's your aunt or your uncle that you don't have to do such a good job, but you do. And I've been fortunate that some current 4-Hers are they help me a lot. Right now, it's mostly just Fridays, but I have to say that, well, Emma and Emily too, they helped me so much throughout the week and throughout the summer that I, I couldn't do this without them. So I do have to say thank you to them for that. And my parents, I couldn't do, I couldn't have got started without them. So I, I thank my parents for that too. Next slide, please. Give back to the community. We, we try our best to give back as much as we can um, I know this evening, I think we fed the softball team, the JV softball team. Um, we fed the ba girls basketball team during the winter a couple times. But just give back. If you've got the opportunity to give back in any way, shape, or form, give back. Um, the best thing you can do is take the money that your community gives you 
and put some of it back into your community because it benefits everyone. Next slide, please. Allow yourself to grow. So most people know I had the black Silverado for that is my first vehicle. I drove that thing till the wheels literally about fell off. And I, I did not want to buy the truck I had now because I wanted to keep driving the black one, but the black one had a few issues that were going to be serious if I kept it. So for the price and the place of the, my new truck, I bought it and I have no regrets. It's a great truck. It's been a great truck and I hope it'll last me many years, but allow yourself to grow. If when I started out, like I said, I had a push mower and then for Christmas, my grandmother bought me a trailer, a little five or $600 trailer. That's what I got. And I mowed her grass for it. Um, and my parents bought me a push mower and I had a riding mower at the house. So from there I went out and I'd use the riding mower on my little trailer. And then I got the I saved up enough money to buy my first skag, which is my walk behind uh, that little thing's paid for itself a hundred times now. Um, then again, I saved up and bought myself a bigger trailer, used the riding mower and the walk behind then bought a zero turn and then so on and so forth. So allow yourself to grow. Always, always try to make yourself, I mean, if you make $5 on a job, that's $5 you didn't have. And that's $5 you can put towards your company to help grow to make more money. So always, always allow yourself room to grow. Next slide, please. And it, it is 100% it is okay to make mistakes in your business. Trust me, I do it all the time. I get greedy on the mower. I don't want to weed eat a really long ditch. So I think I can mow it. It looks like I'm the one pulling out the mower, but in all honesty, I was the one that got the mower stuck. Emma had to come save me with the little mower because I got the big one stuck. So it is okay to make mistakes, but you have to learn, for, learn from them. I learned I can't mow that ditch anymore, so I have to weed eat it. So it's okay to make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, and your mistakes will also help you grow as a person as well as how you learn from them. So that's my biggest thing, learn from your mistakes. Next slide, please. Take on challenges and have fun. We started mowing for New People's Bank that probably my second year in. And for me, that was the biggest challenge I think my business ever faced and has ever overcome because now we mow a lot of challenging places for them. Um, just take on the challenge and do the best you can and people will notice. If you do a high quality job on the challenge, they'll give you another challenge. And you can, if you can do that challenge, they'll give you another one and so on and so forth. And for each, each time the challenge gets more difficult, you'll see that the, it's not always that the money increases a lot, but you will see a growth in your revenue, the more challenges you take on and have fun. Don't, don't start a business and do something that you don't enjoy. Um, if I didn't enjoy mowing, I wouldn't do it as much as I do. Um, in anything that you do business-wise, professional-wise, school-wise, have fun. Life's too short not to have fun. So have, just have fun with whatever you do. You won't work a day in your life if you enjoy what you do. That's a common say. So just have fun and you'll, your company will grow more than you ever imagined if you just have fun. Next slide, please, unless that's the last one. I think that was it. Okay. Okay. Good job. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again with a different. Um, hold on just a second here. And I'm a little slow at this sometimes. So <laughs> I appreciate patience. Okay. Oh, wait just a minute. Let me go back here. Okay. All right, Brody. I'm Brody Allison. I'm the owner and operator of If It's Green Lawn Care, and this is how I started everything off. I started a little bit later than Trey when I was 16 because I wanted to wait till I could just go out by myself and do it, not have to worry about bothering my parents or them watching me do everything. And I started with at 16 when I only had three yards. Now I have 20 residential yards and seven commercial contracts that keep me completely busy five to seven days a week from morning to dark.
you want to talk a little bit about success and what got you <coughs> into being successful with your job? Um, I had to, uh, I had help starting out and I'm pretty much everybody does when you want to be successful and start coming out in the green and making money. And I've had, uh, my grandparents and parents have helped me a lot. They, uh, bought my first mower and my trailer. And then from then to now I've paid for everything else, whether it be cash or trying to build me some credit. As long as you work hard, your customers are going to understand if it's too wet or grass is too tall to mow, but you try and mow it and mow hard, they'll understand. Always trying to learn something new, like that picture with striping. I didn't, I hadn't, didn't know how to do it until I got my second mower. And then all of a sudden it just started happening and I'm pretty good at it. Now I can put three or four different patterns in a yard. I can make it look like the picture. I can make it look like a, like a checkerboard, uh, diamonds, zigzags, and a snake slewing through the yard. And like Trey said, biggest thing about it is have fun. If you have fun while you're doing your job, it ain't really a job. Is it the next slide? Is there another slide? All right. Um, so I was just going to talk for just a minute um, about some safety things. So these are just some um, good ideas for safety, and I'm sure that these guys can um, kind of agree with me a little bit on a lot of this. Um, this is um, a publication that was put out by Virginia Cooperative Extension, and these are just some of the things that they suggest um, when to be safe when you are mowing. And I'm sure sometimes all those things don't work out just perfectly, but um, <clears throat> this, um, link here is a link to the publication through Virginia Tech. And um, if you're interested in that, you can search more on that and find out some more information about safety. Um, and then this other link right here on this next slide is um, a link that is specific about youth lawn safety. And it gives a lot of really good information on there for youth that are getting started. Um, one of the biggest things that it talks about is this safety equipment over here. Um, and um, the things that you need to make sure that you're safe and that you're taken care of when you are um, out either, you know, at someone's yard or on your own, depending on your, of your age, whether you're gonna be by yourself or if somebody's gonna be with you. Um, but um, this is one thing that I strongly encourage that you make sure that you have the correct safety equipment, glasses and, you know, hearing protection because you might not think that it's very loud, but over a period of time, you can damage your ears very easily by not wearing hearing protection. Um, sunblock is very important. Um, having a good hat and some gloves and a first aid kit because you never know when something's going to happen, do you guys? No. no. <laughs> no can I add on safety? Yes, please do. Um, okay, a lot of people you see mow in tennis shoes. That is a terrible, I, I'm not being mean and you might mow in tennis shoes, but that is, that is not safe whatsoever. If you're gonna mow, please wear, it doesn't even have to be a steel toe boot, just a boot of some sort, because that will provide more protection than that thin fabric top of a tennis shoe. If a snake bites a tennis shoe, it's gonna get your foot. Whereas if it bites a boot, it might not go through a steel toe boot. It might poke through a leather boot, but you still got more protection than just the fabric of a tennis shoe. A first aid kit, always keep a first aid kit, even if you're just mowing around your house, always know where it's at, or a fire extinguisher. You never know, uh, those belts and stuff get hot, and if dry grass gets in there, you can easily catch your mower on fire. Always wear safety glasses, clear glasses, sunglasses, it doesn't matter, just wear some form of glass, something to protect your eyes. The last thing that any of us want is to see somebody get their eye put out weed eating because they did not just wear their safety glasses. Ear hearing protection. Like Leanne said, you may not think weed eating 15 minutes here or there is hard on your hearing, but it actually is. I, when I was young, I didn't wear headphones. I'm going to be honest. I didn't. And now I, it, you can, I can tell that I can't hear as good now as I used to. One, because I just didn't wear the hearing protection. And two, once you do it all the time, with no hearing protection, you think you're used to it, but you're never, you're never fully used to it. So please put on just a pair of headphones, even if they're just, they, 
don't play music. Just put up something over or in your ear so you, you can keep your hearing loss. And sunblock, put on sunscreen. You will get sunburn no matter if you're out in the sun 20 minutes or all day. Put, please put on sunscreen. It may not seem like a lot, but every time that you get a sunburn or even a tan, it's damage to your skin. So please put on sunblock so years down the road, you don't have the problems from being out in the sun all the time and not wearing sunscreen. Very good. That's my take on safety. Okay. Wear good jeans job. and wear jeans, wear not jeans. sweatpants, not sweatpants or shorts. Yes. Please wear jeans. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way myself before weed eating and thinking I could wear a pair of shorts and it was not a good day. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you are on here and you are a youth, if you will drop your name and age in the chat box um, and your location, I'm going to make sure that you get um, a free um, gift for joining tonight as a youth. And um, we've got some safety equipment that we're going to share with you um, to make sure that you're safe when you're doing any type of yard work or anything outdoors. So um, if you'll do that. But I've got a few questions we're going to throw out here to you guys for just a minute. Um, and you guys can kind of tag team if you want to, or one of you answer one and then the other one answer another one. Or y'all can flip a coin and see who wants to do it. But um, So the first one is... So both of you all answered this, how old you were when you started your business. So let's go to the next one. Let's see here. Um, do you all have any other employees besides yourself? Yes, I do. Like I said, Emma helps me a lot. She helps me right now all the time because, uh, like I said, my main employees are still in school. Um, the Gillen Water boys, I, like I said, I couldn't make it throughout the week without them helping me on Friday. Um, and I appreciate that more than they know. So Yes, I do have a couple employees. All right. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about advertisement. Um, do you guys mainly use word of mouth and social media? Is that your two main things you use to kind of? Uh, I would say so. Social media and word of mouth. Now, I do set out like yard yeah, signs. I use, I use yard signs and have signs on my trailer. But I would say mine is social media and word of mouth. I don't I like mine's all my yard signs yeah. and stuff. Okay, that's good. And was that like, would you all say that the investment from that was well worth what you put into it for the return that you got from that investment of buying your signs or, you know, things like that that you've? Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, you all kind of talked about equipment. Um, so, what kind of services do you offer and has this changed for you over time? And you all kind of talked about that a little bit, but if you want to expand on that, any. Um, I started out just straight weed eating and then I got to where I could, I would mow the yard and weed eat. And now we're to the point to where, like I said, we offer about any landscaping service you can think of. Um, I don't know, Brody, do you mulch and stuff? I, I mulch, leaf clean up, bush hog landscaping i can do ditch lines i can do i can do about a bit of that so yeah we we've expanded to where we do about all the services offered except for snow all right so how did you when you first started and even now how did you go about deciding how much you were going to charge people because that may be something that a lot of youth don't really have an idea about, you know, how much should I charge someone or how much is too much or, you know. Trial and error. Yeah. I started out and I charged nothing. And it, you learn, you learn quick. You learn quick what your worth is doing this work. Right. So, and now we're to the point to where we know what it's worth. We can look at a yard and tell you the price. But if you always want to make money, do like, what, what would you say? 20, $25 an hour or Oh, well, Brody said it's a lot more than that. I've never charged hourly, so I don't know. I charge hourly on some of my places, and a couple of them, I, I get $75 an hour to do work. So it just kind of depends on how in-depth you're getting with yeah. your work yeah. within that time frame. All right. And I'm sure with some of the gas issues in the last few weeks, I'm sure that's put a little... 
Dan, I'm, already got a diesel. I'm dead in the water. <laughs> All right. Um, so how did you decide or how do you decide how many clients you have so that you don't overwork yourself or over plan yourself? I can't answer that question because uh, yeah, I'm yeah, bad I about taking on idea. way more than I can handle. <laughs> yeah. Like I have this year. Um, Brody, uh, yeah. I low, I'm a, yeah. a lot more than Brody, mm -hmm. a whole lot more. And me and Brody went in together on a contract and I was really busy before. And now I'm, I work about 12 hours, five days a week. So all right. Okay. Um, and a lot of these questions we're asking you are just to kind of give um, kids an idea, you know, about what to think about, the types of things that you have to think about when you're brand new and you're starting out. Okay. But, um, new and starting out, the biggest way to tell what kind of clients you can take is start out and say, I'll take on five and I can do one a day. Right. And then see how quickly you can do. I'm not saying speed through it and do a terrible job. But do a good job and do it as quickly as you can because that's how we all make money. We have to do jobs quickly to make money. So do it and see how long it takes you. If you think you can get two in a day, then take on 10. If you think you can get three a day, take on 15. Just so on and so forth. And it'll come to you as you go. Um, we're I'm to my limit for four people in one vehicle. So, All right. And like Brody said, it's normally him and one other person. Yeah, they do. I have either one or two people doing it. And I can do, depending on if it's been wet or if I've kept the yards up and done them every week on their day, I can do – I've done it 20 yards in a day before. I have done. I usually mow all mine in one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Woo. Seven days in the dark. All right. Um. So – do you all just do like cash or do you all have, do you all use, utilize like online, like PayPal, things like that? Or how do you, how do you work that out? Okay. I guess you can say I'm behind the times of payment. I take check and we, we can do cash, but we have to turn in everything that's a check. So right. most of the time we just take a check unless it's like a one-time thing. Like I, I ran out of checks. That's fine, but we take a check. We don't have like a square reader or anything like that, and we don't have like a card on file system. But I don't do PayPal. I, I get confused with sending emails sometimes, so I don't want to buy for people. I take I take checks, and then my big stuff's direct deposit. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, and then like Brody's right. My big companies are direct deposit. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so what is one challenge you have faced by starting or owning your own business? Um, and have you seen any specific or different challenges during the last year with some of the challenges of the pandemic and things like that? I personally, yeah, I would say the biggest thing is competition went from, there's like four of us who mowed in wise to now 20 people mowing wise. Mm -hmm. So I would say that competition here went through the roof, but I feel like as, you know, time goes on and things start to get back to normal, we'll see it go back, Down to normal. Back, back to the way it was. Our biggest challenge right now is finding gas and diesel. So I'm sure, uh, which hopefully that'll be sorted out by the end of the week. Right. I hope. Um, so if we can make it till then, we'll be fine. But if this goes on longer than, say, till the mid next week, I'll, I'll be out of gas and diesel and everything. So we'll be shut down. And like me and Brody were talking about, no one in Wise has diesel and Brody's fuel lights on. So Brody is really, really done for today. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I figured that kind of put a dent in some of your work for the next few days at least if not the next week till everything kind of figures itself out um so what is one lesson good or bad you have learned with owning your own business one lesson that i've learned hello uh yeah don't cut yourself short 
own when you're owning your own business. Okay. Don't think you can't do something. Go out and try and do it. And even and you might not be able to in the end, but give yourself a chance because some of those places that are like that, you'll end up being able to do it. And you'll have that if it's a big yard, you'll have that yard party till you quit mowing. Right. So that would be my thing. Trey just got a phone call. So that's okay. That's all right. Um, if you had to give one piece of advice to teens starting a business, what would be your one piece of advice? Do the best you can do, no matter how long it takes. Do the best to your ability. Double check everything you do. If you have people working for you, go back and make sure they've done it right. And if they haven't, go back and follow them. That would be the one thing I would tell them. All right. Did you learn any? Did you learn any of that in 4-H? <laughs> Maybe a little bit working at the barn. I was gonna say shoveling the barn out during the fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, was there anything else that we didn't cover that you thought was important that? You really can't talk about safety enough. I even have some of my places are bad for snakes. I wear I wear chaps. Like I'll have my whole hips down covered and stuff like that. But right. that's about it. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So does anybody um yeah. Yeah. on this Zoom call have any other questions for Brody? And maybe Trey will be back with us in a minute. <laughs> I have a question for Brody. Uh, Brody, you mentioned the patterns that you're able to put in the lawns. Mm -hmm. I would assume that's a pretty good advertisement. Do people contact you just specifically because they want that pattern and they say, hey, I want to I want this pattern. I got to find out who this guy is. Yes, most of the, most people it it helps you in two ways. Uh, it makes the lawn look better. But if you're driving by a yard and it's got straps in it, it's going to draw your attention and then you'll see a yard sign in it or something like that so yeah all right trey one of the questions that i asked i'm gonna let you uh what if you could give one piece of advice to some to a young person starting a business what would be your one piece of advice don't be afraid to ask for help don't be afraid if you start a lawn care business and you truly need help don't be afraid to reach out to me or brody or lawn rangers or somebody like that. We we are on a time crunch, but we can always help you. That's my biggest piece of advice. Ask for help. If you're doing it by yourself and you're behind, ask your parents. I know that I have multiple times and they will be more than happy to help you because they're more excited to see you out working and trying to do good and better for yourself and so on and so forth, that they'll help you and not and they will not feel bad about it. And neither will you because you know that they don't mind. So my biggest piece of advice would be ask for help. All right. Are, Anybody else? Are you all happy with your equipment choices? If you had to go back and do it again, would you buy the same equipment in the same order? Or is there something you would have done different as far as your equipment goes? I would love to buy a brand new turf tiger, but relatively speaking, I don't think that $14,000 is worth a lawnmower. No matter... No matter how fast or productive it is, the mower I just bought, I can do everything that a turf tiger can do and make it look just as good. So um, the only regret with my new mower is it spits oil out and they won't fix it. So that is my regret on buying it. So I haven't had any trouble with anything. I, well, your Toro just died. My, yeah, I've had six mowers. Um, I have three that actually run and i last week i broke down and had to go out and buy a new one a whole new mower because it totaled out the mower it was going to cost more to fix it than i paid for it so uh, which i still have my original mower and it still runs and cuts i'm over around the house with it that's a good deal i've got i've got a question we may have already covered this maybe when i stepped out but uh, uh do you all insure your equipment I do, yeah. Uh, Brody does. I don't because a deductible is normally five or six hundred dollars, and most of the time, no. But most of the time, you're not going to see your big mowers get stolen because they all have keys. Just take your key, lock up your trailer, 
so on and so forth. Weed eaters and stuff is what they'll steal. And for the deductible and the cost of the insurance, I feel like it's just cheaper because the weed eater is not five or six hundred dollars. So by the time I take that, I just don't. But I do have liability insurance of like three million dollars and workers comp and stuff like that. I have everything but workers comp when it comes to the insurance. Good deal. Thank you. Excellent job, guys. Excellent job. I'll tell you what impresses me is that both of you came in here this evening and sat down together, two different companies, and you're supporting each other. And I think that's great. We appreciate it. We went, well, we went to high school together and we've mowed with each other since we started. So, like, I got done mowing today and went and helped him until we walked in the door at 550. Well, I was going to say, I can tell that if one of you got in a bind, the other one would help the other out. And so I think that's great. Yeah. Perks of living in a small town. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not a competition and that's great. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Anybody else have any questions? I see some of their helpers are on here watching us too with us. So that's good. They're supporting, they're supporting their employee. I mean employer. <laughs> so all right. Well, I really appreciate you guys joining us. And um I I think you gave some really good advice and some things that um can be taken from this and help you to be help other kids to be successful like you guys have been. So I appreciate it and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for letting us do it. Yeah. I'm I'm glad. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too bad. So oh, no, you did a good job. Excellent job. Appreciate thank it. You. Appreciate it very much. Uh, you guys did great. And thank you for taking time that you could have been making money to uh, to come and talk to us. So so I really, really do appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Well, everybody have a great evening.